I'm Rabbi Kevin Bemmel. I'm a lieutenant commander in the United States Navy. And I'm here at the... Oh. Stationed where? So currently I'm stationed in Sembach, Germany, which is about 30 minutes from the major air base at Ramstein. And I work at the Navy's Warrior Transition Program, where each week we have between oh, about 25 to 30 to as many as a 200 sailors coming back from South Asia or Africa and we're a waypoint for them so they come to us to decompress to take a little time to reflect back on their deployment experience and get some thoughts about what reintegration back home and in their communities and their jobs will mean before they move on then to our headquarters in Norfolk mustering off of active duty and back into their civilian life. Uh, what sort of uh, carriers or uh, ships are they coming off of? So typically they're actually not on a ship. Most of these sailors are land-based. They could be with a Navy unit. Sometimes they'll be with, uh, they'll be support personnel to Naval Special Warfare, otherwise known as the SEALs. Uh, or they could be with an Army or, or a Marine Corps unit or an Air Force unit doing intelligence work or or involved with flying uh, UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles. Uh, other times they're doing logistics work, uh, other types of admin work. So most of them are, are providing support services, typically to another branch of the military. Uh, uh, but your title is chaplain. What's the equivalent rank of that? Well, so a chaplain can serve at any rank. Uh, I started out as a lieutenant junior grade, and I've been promoted twice to lieutenant commander now, and I'm, I'm actually waiting for the board results in February to see if I get promoted to commander, which in my case will be, that'll be my terminal rank because by the time I'd be eligible for another promotion, I'll be too old and the Navy will have told me to go home. <laughs> Would you know offhand what percentage of chaplains, military chaplains, are Jewish? It's about 1%. Uh, so there, uh, I, I, well, that's for the Navy. Um, although I think that pretty holds pretty much true um, across uh, all, all the military branches. So there's, I think, nine Navy chaplains on active duty at the moment. I happen to be the senior uh, chaplain on active duty right now because I was mobilized to go to Germany, um, and uh, I think there's uh, five reservist chaplains out of a total of about, I think there's about a thousand to. 1,200 uh, uh, chaplains total in the Navy. What sort of things do you do in your work uh, with uh, sailors? So at the Warrior Transition Program, it's, it's a little bit different than you would have at a typical unit. So because our primary um, mission there is to help these sailors go uh, go through their transition from military life back to civilian life. We're very focused on 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 several core um, several core issues. So um, I, I I happen to be responsible for the workshops that they go through to uh, contextualize their deployment and then look at issues going forward, re, you know, reuniting with their family and and workplaces and such. So. I, I both uh, work on the content as well as training the other facilitators to run those workshops. Um, and then there's, of course, uh, pastoral counseling. So for someone who's having a challenge of one sort or another, uh, um, I'm available to help them with that. And then we take them on uh, three different, uh, we call them reintegration trips, um, two of which are to cities nearby to our, our base. and. It's a time for us to kind of informally engage with the sailors, um, give them a chance to talk about whatever's on their mind, and also give them a chance to get used to being back into um, a, a, an environment that's more similar to what they would have come out of when they left home, as opposed to a more austere environment in, say, Djibouti in the Horn of Africa or you know Afghanistan, something like that. It sounds like a lot of your work is social work, would you say? It is, it is social work, uh, and you know, as a chaplain, so there's always a spiritual underpinning mm -hmm. to it. Um, but, for example, when we get augment workshop facilitators, oftentimes they will be uh, clinical social workers, uh, and they they're very good at doing this type of work because they understand the social context that these sailors are going to be moving through. Um, and then we also have healthcare providers who. 
um, f fill a similar role to mine. Obviously, they're more concerned with physical health than they are uh, mental and spiritual health. So, in, in terms of the pastoral counseling, uh, how much pushback do you get uh, from a, a, a Christian who may say, "Well, you're, you're even are even of my faith." Uh, never had that happen even once. So, uh, first of all, they're generally coming to me to talk to me, so they, they know I'm a rabbi. Um, but oftentimes Christians will come to me specifically because I'm a rabbi and they want to hear kind of my take on, on their issues or off, sometimes it's, you know, my take on, on a scriptural matter, you know, just as a, a matter of sort of intellectual interest. Um, although, you know, throughout my career, um, the people most likely to come see me are, are of course, the Jews in the military. Um, but I also get the non-religious people and, uh, and Muslims tend to come see me um, as opposed to a Christian chaplain because, um, you know, Judaism, especially in its, in its more um, uh, traditional aspects, is a legalistic, uh, legalistic uh, faith. And of course, Islam is as well. So there's a sense that, you know, I can understand, for example, their need to keep uh, the the Muslim uh -huh. dietary laws and and their need to pray several times a day, that sort of thing. Uh -huh. And to what extent does the army observe those uh, uh, requests? Well, so all the branches of the service do their their best to accommodate those kinds of religious needs. Um, they're always subject to the necessity to meet the mission. So uh, for myself, I, I've never had any particular difficulty, for example, keeping kosher. Um, but as I tell people, you know, I didn't join the Navy for the cuisine, so <laughs> I ate a pretty, you know, basic diet. Um, and, and, you know, same with um, uh, Muslims that I've dealt with, you know, they're, we're not having the, the most fantastic fare that you've ever had, but, but we're certainly getting nourished and, and able to, you know, fulfill our, our, our religious obligations as we choose to. Uh, and so the, you know, the military is, is a, as flexible as they can possibly be in, in accommodating those kinds of requests. On that topic of uh, interfaith, uh, are there also Muslim chaplains? Uh, there are. Um, at the moment, I don't believe there are any Muslim chaplains in the Navy. So on my first tour of duty that started back in 2006, I was in Okinawa, Japan, and there was, we had a Muslim chaplain there. We were, we were pretty close friends, and it was really uh, a fascinating uh, interchange that the two of us had, the, dis you know, the discussions we were able to, to have. Uh, he, was, um, uh, he had studied Talmud. Uh, uh, you know, during uh, different p points in his career, uh -huh. and so you know, we were able to to really, you know, have have have, have very much of a meeting in in, in, in a um, you know in a in an intellectual sense, uh -huh. um, and so uh, you know, um, uh, there was uh, I, when I was on Okinawa, he's also the brig chaplain. Brig is navy for jail, uh -huh. um, and uh, there was a uh, a prisoner there who was who was Muslim. Um, I won't go into the circumstances. They were very, very unfortunate. Um, but I was called in to talk to him because they were afraid he would commit suicide. And through working with him to get through that issue, um, we became actually quite close friends. And, and the joke around uh, the brig was was the was the Jew and the Muslim get together or get to get along better than any two other people, you know, in this place. So you know, uh, the military is is really it's it's that kind of it's that kind of atmosphere, you know, we, where people have a lot of mutual respect for each other. So that's, I think, uh, one of the, the things that, that keeps me in the military and, and one of the things that makes my work most rewarding. So, um, From the Air Force, there was a, a book written by Mikey Weinstein, who has a, a group you may be familiar with about uh, trying to keep religion out of the military in, in terms of uh, uh, forcing or coercing, uh, like uh, as happened uh, at the Air Force Academy. What kind of prejudices do Jewish uh, service members face? You know, I have never encountered either personally or um, on behalf of another service member prejudice against Jews in the military. Um, there have been misunderstandings, um, but but I don't think it was it was um, it was 
directed specifically because the person was Jewish. Um, for example, in the Marine Corps, um, the idea of wearing a head covering like a yarmulke and uniform has been quite controversial. Um, but frankly, the, the Muslim chaplain that I mentioned uh, a, few, a few minutes ago, um, he came in for a, a, a much more difficult time about that than, uh, than any of the Jewish personnel did. And in fact, I was involved with um, helping resolve that issue on, on his behalf. So, um, you know, there, there, there are misunderstandings, but I think that uh, um, honestly, the, not, not so much against Jews. Uh, unfortunately, to the extent that there is, it's, it's typically um, targeted against uh, Muslims. Uh -huh. How about any prejudice within the chaplaincy itself uh, towards non-Christian chaplains? Um, you know, we're such a small number that generally you don't see that. Um, the rivalry in the chaplain corps uh, tends to be among Christian denominations. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, typically um, between um, more mainstream versus uh, more evangelical uh, denominations. So the same kind of thing that you see, you know, in, in civilian society. I mean, the military, after all, is a product, right, of our society. So there are, you know, doctrinal differences, and, and those sometimes uh, are, are, are played out within the chaplain corps, unfortunately, so. You mentioned uh, wearing a kippah. Uh, do you wear one yourself? I do, uh-huh. You aren't wearing one now, are you? I am. <laughs> yeah. Would you show us? Would you oh, show sure. Yeah, yeah. there you <laughs> look at that. Now, for many people in the uh, American military service, are you the first keeper wearing American they've ever seen? Uh, many times I am, yes. I may, I may in fact be the first Jew that they've met as far as they know. Uh -huh. um, you know, most Jews in the military, first of all, there's a very small number of Jews in the military, and the vast majority of them do not wear a kippah. So, well, and, and, and don't necessarily self-identify for various reasons of their own. Uh, so, um, you know, because um, I, I wear a kippah, um, they know for sure that I'm Jewish. And, and, and uh, like here at the conference, I've had many people come up to me uh, to shake my hand and say, wow, it's so nice to see, you know, an American service member wearing a yarmulke, <laughs> right? And, uh, you know, they're just kind of delighted because they've, they've never seen it before. So. And does it signify a, a tolerance of the military that, that uh, we are welcome there? I think so. Uh, you know, um, it unfortunately wasn't always the case, right? I mean, um, even as, as late as um, the 1980s, uh, um, President Reagan was, was fighting this battle um, against uh, prejudice, uh, specifically in the Navy. Um, and he directed his, his, his Navy secretary to, you know, in no uncertain terms, eradicate this from the Navy. So, you know, I'm, I'm a beneficiary of that, right, several decades later uh, that, I, you know, like I said, I've never experienced any, you know, personal animosity against, my, against me, um, especially because, you know, I'm Jewish, so. Do dog tags still indicate the uh, religion of the person who wears them? Uh, I believe so, but <laughs> so, uh, you know, because I haven't uh, deployed uh, to a combat zone in the last six or seven years, um, that policy could have changed. But I, I think on my dog tags when I did my carrier deployment, I, I think it did indicate uh, religion. I, I think that's a good thing because, you know, God forbid the, the worst happens and, and someone needs that spiritual care and that is unable to um, convey their preference so that way the military can take care of them in the way that would be um, most spiritually nourishing for them. So, Is there uh, an issue of uh, suspicion of dual loyalty like there has been in the 1950s, for example, with Julian, uh, Julius and Ethel Rosenberg that, um, let's say, Muslims uh, in service or Jews in service might not be safe to have in wartime? I mean, uh, as a Japanese, of course, during World War II, right. uh, uh, have you noticed that uh, in your service? No, I, I, honestly, I really haven't. Um, so um, with the recent uh, announcement that 
uh, the United States would move its embassy to Jerusalem. I did get a number of people asking me what I thought about that, and, and I'm sure they were asking me that because I'm Jewish and they wanted, you know, a, a Jew's take on that issue. Um, but I don't think that was any indication of um, that they felt that somehow I had uh, divided loyalty or anything like that. I think it was a uh, it was a genuine interest to hear, you know, uh, a perspective of of someone who. Um, might reasonably be thought to have a real stake in that question, right? Um, I think with respect to Muslims, you know, uh, to be honest, I'm not a Muslim. Uh, I mean, I'm not, of course I'm not a Muslim, but I mean, I've, I've never had a Muslim express a problem like that to me. Um, but, you know, as I said before, unfortunately, to the extent that there is religious prejudice in the, in the military. It's, it's, typically, um, it's typically targeted at, at, at Muslims, so. Um, was there a move recently to, uh, to reduce the number of Jewish chaplains, or am I thinking of something uh, different? It may, may not be Navy, but um, in general? I'm, I, I, you know, I'm don't, I don't follow the other service branches that closely. I'm not aware of any of that happening in the Navy. Yeah. Uh, quite to the contrary, I think um, all the service branches would like to have um, more Jewish chaplains, more Muslim chaplains, and more Roman Catholic chaplains. Right? Those are the three um, uh, denominations that historically um, chaplain corps have been you know, most uh, interested in finding out. And, and in fact, I'm, I'm a beneficiary of that because I went to join the Navy. I was um, 42, 43 years old, which was the maximum age to join is 40. And the reason I was able to join nonetheless was because they wanted Jewish chaplains so badly they were willing to give me an age waiver. So, hmm. uh -huh. Of course, then they sent you to Germany. <laughs> well, <laughs> first they sent me to Okinawa, <laughs> um, and, and in fairness to the Navy, I, I volunteered to go to Germany um, because the reality is if I, if I hadn't gotten selected to go to Germany, I probably would have gotten sent to you know, Djibouti or, or Gitmo or someplace that was much less pleasant um, where my family could not come visit me very easily. So. Uh, are you there without your family? I am, yes. Uh -huh. now, what's it like uh, being in Germany? I mean, living in Germany? Well, um, I mean, I mean, as a Jew, right? Especially, you know, we just had uh, uh, Holocaust Remembrance Day, and so, and uh, and I imagine that in Europe, you have you have visited the uh, cemeteries in France and, uh, and and seen the graves. What's it like for you to be in modern day Germany? Well, I, 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 you know, maybe it's me. Um, I've I've found the the German people to be very warm, very welcoming. Um, they can be reserved at first, but once you kind of get through that initial reserve, um, they, they are very warm people. Uh, I don't speak German, but I, from time to time, will listen to German radio, and, and I can catch little snippets of things, and there, there is a, uh, a very, very um, profound concern about any indications of anti-Semitism in their society, and it's, it is, you know, very, very thoroughly condemned. So. Um, I, I, I think that, um, you know, because of their past, they are, and they remain very, very sensitive uh, to that issue. Um, I traveled to uh, Paris uh, in January with my wife and daughter. We took a little, took a little leave and, um, you know, and I was, I was told, you know, you have to be careful around Paris and, you know, this, that and the other thing. And yet, I don't know. I wore my kippah wherever I went, and, and we had a lovely time, and, and the Parisians were as friendly as could be, and, and I saw other, um, you know, Jews there, some of them, you know, with their tzitzis out and, and wearing their yarmulkes, and so I, I'm, I don't want to say that there aren't problems there. I, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure there are. The news reports, of course, say so, but I, I think that perhaps some of these things are, are you know, a little... Maybe they were a little bit ex exaggerated. Um, yeah. How about uh, being an American? Is it tougher being a Jew in uh, in uh, Germany or France, or is it tougher being an American? 
Wow, that's a great question. Um, I mean, when you're out of uniform, when, you know, when people are not giving yeah. you the respect the uniform commands. Well, so I, I guess probably the highest compliment I can get is, is when I'm out of uniform, people think I'm a European, <laughs> I guess because of the way I dress. <laughs> if you have blue eyes, they might, might think that you're German. Uh, maybe, perhaps. Um, and and I, don't, I don't go out of my way to sort of push in, in people's faces that I'm an American. I, I want to be a, a good guest in, in their country. Um, and so, uh, you know, as I would want people to be, you know, a good guest in, in here in our country, right? right. So I, I, th I think that's, that's one of the things that Judaism teaches us, right, is, is we, want, we want to be good hosts and we want to be good guests. So, uh, um, I, you know, I've typically when um, Germans, for example, find out I'm American, the response I get is, oh, you're from America. Where are you from? Oh, I, I, we, I, like I was in a cafe one day with uh, some of the, we call them redeployers. These are the people that come to our program. I, we were sitting with a few redeployers and a, a German man and his, his wife walked in and um, he, he, he was kind of looking at us a little bit like, you know, I wonder, you know, I think he was trying to figure out, could they be Americans kind of thing, you know? And so finally he, he, he looked at us, he says, he says you know, are, are you from America? And we said, yes, we are. He said, oh, America, what a great country. My brother moved there years ago. And he, all, all he wanted to do was talk about America and, you know, so. And show it that he can speak English. Yeah, I think so, yeah. But I think too, he, you know, he wanted us to feel welcome to his city, you know, so it was good. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been to any of the World War II commemoration uh, services or ceremonies? Uh, unfortunately not. Um, yeah. Not yet, yes. Uh, I mean, we, we're trying to plan a trip to uh, Bastogne, for example. Um, uh, the officer in charge of our program has, has a keen interest. Um, because of the way the program operates, um, although I had, you know, sort of grand notions about traveling all through Europe for the year I was there, I've, I've had actually very little time to, to travel and, and, and do things outside the program. So, but I'm still looking forward to that. Uh, in summation, um, for non-Jewish viewers, uh, while a Christianity does uh, advocate spreading the good word, does Judaism advocate uh, spreading Judaism to non-Jews? No, you know, Judaism is not an evangelical faith. So I think one of the, th one of the aspects of Judaism that makes my job, um, I don't know, less threatening perhaps, or certainly easier for me to pursue is that I, I have no imperative to convert someone else to Judaism. Um, no matter who the person is, they have, um, they have the ability to make a close connection with God in the same way that I do, uh, you know, as a rabbi. So those things don't, don't matter from a Jewish perspective. And so I don't need to get involved in any of those issues. Uh, you know, I can, I can meet people where they're at and really, you know, help them from their place as, as opposed to potentially having, you know, some sort of um, other agenda, if you will. Um, and that having been said, you know, while, while occasionally you will hear of, of Christian chaplains trying to proselytize service members, um, it's, it's, it's extremely rare. And, and even then, in many cases, it's, it's a misunderstanding, I think, between the chaplain and, and the other person as to what they intended to do. So, Rabbi Kevin Bemmel, thank you for speaking with us. Uh, if people wanted to uh, follow you on uh, social media, or do, you, or do you write and publish anywhere? So I do. I blog at uh, bemmel.com, B-E-M-E-L.com. Um, I'm, I, I'm not posting any new, new material right now because of the work I'm doing in Germany, but lots of material there. And um, I'm on Twitter at, at Kevin Bemmel, and I'm on Facebook at uh, Navy Rabbi. So uh, be happy to... Um, you know, have your viewers uh, get in touch with me if they have any questions or if there's something I can do for them, by all means. Very nice. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Pleasure.